We can also ask a function to return values back to us. And if that's the case, we have to indicate that we want the values to be returned by indicating the data type that will be returned. So let's go ahead and create a method that is exactly the same as the previous one. We're going to concatenate two strings. But this case, we're going to return a value. So we have to indicate a return type. In this case, it will be string. And this method of concatenate will actually end up being a little more true to what we should be dealing with in terms of discrete functionality because we're only going to have essentially there'll be two lines of code in here but it's only going to do one thing so static string concatenate again it accepts the two arguments first and last and right off the bat Visual Studio is complaining with her little red squeakly because it's saying hey not all code paths return a value that's fine we'll fix that here in just a moment so we will use the same values that we used above string whole equals first plus last in that will do the concatenation for us now in this function because it is actually designed to return something we have to use that return keyword and we will return whole so that's the value that we're going to return so we're going to take whole we're going to assign to it the concatenated value of first and last and then we return that back to the calling application or the calling piece of code currently there isn't anything calling it right so concat has been commented out so it's not returning anything it's not expecting anything to come back what we now have to do is we have to set up a variable to accept the return value coming back and we can do this a couple of ways we know we're accepting a string value so we can say string let's just call it word so we can keep the values a little bit separate so we know that we're passing information back and forth here in, in different variables we'll call it string word and just leave it at that for now and then we can say word equals concatenate so C sharp knows about concatenate and we will pass in first space and then we want to pass in last comma and C sharp says yeah this is fine you've declared a variable called word and you're going to assign to that variable the result of this concatenate function whatever concatenate does we want you to do that so if we execute it nothing is going to happen the assignment will take place but we won't know that it did so let's put in a console dot right line and then we will say word so that we can actually see that output on the screen control F5 to execute this our concatenation took place yay it worked fine I mentioned that there's a couple of different ways of actually calling a method that returns something to it and the ways that we can do that is we've declared a variable here and then we assign it here well anytime we do variable declaration we can also do variable assignment at the same time so if we backspace out of here get rid of that assignment on a separate line we can actually do the assignment on the same line so we declare the variable we do the assignment on the same line and it simply will work the way as it did before control F5 first last because what we're doing is we're basically telling C sharp I want you to assign to word whatever the result of this is so C sharp functions a little bit strangely sometimes in the way it does this it, it will declare the variable first and then we'll do a right to left afterwards so it will go out and call this function first the function does its concatenation then it comes back in and it assigns it perfectly fine in here so before we end one more thing that I do want to show you that you can also do with this anytime you want to call another function C sharp allows you to basically build statements from multiple sub statements so what we can actually do here is we can within our console dot right line method get the value back from the concatenate method as well much like we deal with mathematical parentheses for orders of operation this kind of works the same way our internal values take place first and then we go to the outer values so if we do a control F5 it works perfectly the same as the other one did all right so these are different ways of calling those methods or the functions that you create however you want to accept that return value coming back it's very important to know that if you are writing a function that is returning a value you have to specify the data type that will be returned okay so that's functions in a nutshell it's a very quick and short introduction to the functions these are quick and simple functions there's not a whole lot of information in them but it does show you how you can create scope modifiers static in this case because we're working with the static void main 
you won't always use that. You'll use public or private in other locations. The return type, if it's going to return a value, or void if it is not returning a value. For those of you who are coming from Visual Basic and looking at C-sharp, void would be the same as you writing something called a sub or a subroutine. And returning a value would be the same as you creating a function. All right, so these are called functions in C-sharp. Visual Basic calls them a sub or a function. Again, you're either returning or not returning a value. You give your function a name, you put arguments in the parentheses if it's going to accept. Again, you don't have to put anything in here. Empty parentheses means it's not accepting anything, but in which case this method is going to complain because we don't have anything in here, right? So you can accept arguments. You don't have to accept arguments. There's no limit or virtually no limit on what you can put in here. Open and close your function with curly braces and then put your lines of code you want to execute in here. Remember, if you're returning a value, you must put the return statement in your function.